Okay. So now that you are a master, is there anything you do to um, strengthen your skills once you are a master? Sure. Continuing education? Yeah, or? basically continuing education. Um, I, st I have two teachers that I still, you know, answer to. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, you know, I've been training in the ministry for a while also mm -hmm. um, in Indiana, and it's, it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing mm -hmm. process, in, and I'm always trying to, to try different techniques to, you know, to better myself as a practitioner. You never just sort of sit and rest. Mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting to have you here tonight because I know from personal experience, um, when my mom had cancer, we went to a um, Reiki therapist. She thought she was going for a massage, and the woman was able to identify everywhere in her body where it was mm -hmm. located. And it just really opened my eyes up to Eastern medicine and how it works because we're, you know, at least myself growing up here, you're so used to thinking Western and just diagnosing symptoms and the mind body right. connection is really powerful yeah um, I yeah I agree also it's um, and actually how that is how she was able to diagnose that mm -hmm. was when the body's injured it emits heat mm -hmm. so you can detect immediately where in the body you know and you're trained to sort of read that and how to read energy um, that's incredible yeah so it's it's a, I believe that the body has answers for us mm -hmm. you know discovering discovering ourselves, discovering our higher selves, um, <clears throat> discovering our communication, our relationship with the universe or whatever it is that we're connected to, whatever is our guiding force, mm -hmm. um, I believe is revealed in us, you know. Now, do you, is there anyone that you wouldn't recommend Reiki for or do you think um, people who already feel imbalanced should go just? I think that if somebody has, um, <clears throat> Again, it depends. It's hard to just sort of give a blanket statement. You know, right. I think that somebody who <clears throat> has, you know, if all they had were back pains, there would be a certain point where I couldn't help them. I would probably ask them to go see a chiropractor, mm -hmm. you know, if they were throwing their back out, so if it was a sports injury. Some things are better suited for different practitioners, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and if I were, if somebody were to walk in, you know, I would never take... Um, somebody who was in certain stages of cancer without them seeing a doctor as well. You know, mm -hmm. so it, and that's the nice thing about Reiki, it's a complementary thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't interfere with the treatment that you're doing. Um, you know, it can work in conjunction with acupuncture, anything that you're doing. It's, mm -hmm. it's a non-invasive technique. Uh, but it would depend. It would depend. If I think that some, there was a, somebody who was more effective mm -hmm. for that person, I would let them know. Okay. So where can we go to sign up or to meet you? And um, I'm located at Healing Quest. Okay. You know, so I'm. You can find me there. I know at www.healingquest.com. I think. Healingquestcenter.com. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Healingquestcenter.com. Okay. And, okay. There's the number. So there's more information available, and I'm there. You can just. My name's Margaret. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. So much. Thanks, Lisa. Is there anything else you'd like to share about? Um, different experiences you've had or different experiences I've had um, when there's been so many experiences that I've had mm -hmm. like what is your typical client who comes in a typical client are, are people there, who are fatigued even? and stressed and who are anxious would be my the typical people that I see okay and they're able to get more in balance. Yeah, or? definitely. I don't. I, it's so funny. We were talking about this earlier. I don't really don't believe in the word balance. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible to have balance. Um, I believe that everyone has their own natural equilibrium, and mm -hmm. whatever's my equilibrium is not your equilibrium. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when people start talking about the word balance, it sort of makes their objective objective, mm -hmm. you know, and it really should be a subjective experience. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of um, what I talk about is the fact that there's no such thing as balance. So if mm -hmm. somebody feels inclined, for example, um, part of the anxiety is stressing. People are mm -hmm. stressed out and trying to live a balanced life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to happen. You know, there are certain things that are not equal in value. Mm -hmm. You know, you can never measure your family against your work. It's just they're not they're, they're not the same in value. Be. Exactly. Right. So. Um, 
So I'm always telling people, you know, if you in fact have the urge or you're compelled to work 10 hours, work 10 hours. If you're compelled to be at your house for 10 hours, be at your house for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. Your body has a way of going through that pendulum and it'll find its own equilibrium. Mm -hmm. When people start getting hysterical about should and shouldn'ts mm -hmm. and I, questioning their natural guidance is when resistance occurs, when anxiety occurs, when fatigue occurs. Um, you, you have to let yourself ride those things out. You know, so I guess if uh, taking the opportunity to be here, I, if I could relay a message, it would be like, there's no such thing as balance. That's kind of relieving to hear because... <laughs> in my opinion, in my experience, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not the end all be all, but it's right. been my 11 years of experience that that, it's not... There's an equilibrium, and I would replace the word equilibrium with the word balance. So you need to find what's right for you. For what's you. What's going to work for you. Now, if someone's going through Reiki treatment, is there anything mm -hmm. else they should pay attention to, like their sleeping patterns or diet or other things that they, would help them? Um, one thing that I ask people to do is really, um, mm -hmm. mood swings are common sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. just observe themselves. I ask that people don't judge mm -hmm. their behavior, but just to sort of observe themselves because sometimes mm -hmm. things are unfolded, you know. Um, dreams are important, you know, there's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Intuition, you know, inclination, natural inclination, you know, mm -hmm. stuff, things that people notice, coincidences, you know, that's, that's what I ask. That's mm -hmm. how, what I ask people to look at. Okay. You know, or the same things that seem to keep coming up in their life patterns. Okay. Um, the other question I had was, you mentioned energy earlier and the concept of energy. Could you expand a little bit more? Because I feel like people throw the term around, <clears throat> excuse me, and, um, how, how do you define it as a Reiki master? Um, energy would be, how would I define energy? Gosh, I, we were all made up of energy. Mm -hmm. And it has, um, you know, you could define it in so many different ways. Your, you know, your aura is your energy, chakras mm -hmm. are energy. They're a part of us and they're part of everything that is mm -hmm. in our relationship to everything that is. And there are different forms of energy. So can we, so we can change our energy? Do we ever Absolutely. By give intent. off our energy? Yes. Yeah, I mean, or is it energy, intent? we're constantly exuding mm -hmm. energy. And there are ways to control our energy and to draw things to us mm -hmm. on an energetic level. Um, you know, Dr. Linder, who has, a, she, I think, summarized it, best on Deborah's wall at Healing Quest when she talks about the fact that energy follows thought. Hmm. It's very true. Um, and it does. You know, Actually, we can go into Bell's theorem and atoms and splitting of atoms, but um, we're all made up of particles, you know, I mean, if you're talking mm -hmm. about the molecular structure of our body. Um, but the, it's sort of a difficult thing to quantify, but in Reiki specifically, it's talking about the intent of the energy. You know, we have... Um, your chakras are made up of energy, mm -hmm. you know, and they have certain functions. So there are different forms of energy, mm -hmm. definitely. So when a person comes in a room and you can just, it feels cold, or if someone comes in and has a great presence, is that their energy? It is their preceded energy. by their intent? Yeah, oh, that's exactly. Very interesting. Well, that's, that's what gets interesting. Mm -hmm. You can intend it or you cannot intend it. Mm -hmm. You know, but you can surpass certain things by your intent. I don't know if I'm getting very so existential right here. So what do you mean by right non-intend? Um, um, where does it come from? If somebody's just like... They don't realize? The intent would be your conscious mind. Right. So um, let's say if somebody comes into a room and they're angry, you know, you can, mm -hmm. you can kind of see it. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're sort of drawn to that person and they're visibly like upset and you're wondering, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on? Maybe I shouldn't approach that person if you have mm -hmm. a question for them. Might not be the best timing. Mm -hmm. It's sort of the same way. I mean, body language, there's so many things that can, by the naked eye, mm -hmm. untrained eye, if you will, untrained in this art form, mm -hmm. you can sense, you can read people's body language, you know. Um, it's the same that's applied. When it's, you're intending to be kind, you know, it's mm -hmm. a conscious thought, even if you're really angry. You know, that would be the way of surpassing your natural state. Mm -hmm. 
Now, say someone comes in and they do have negative energy. Uh -huh. A lot of times you feel like you can pick this up. Or is there oh, any yeah. way you can protect yourself or yeah, help that's, their that's energy? Part manipulate? of being trained is that there okay. there is a series of things that you have to go through where you you do not intermix your energy with the mm -hmm. person and negative energy. Um, the only time that it's a negative energy is when it's depleting that person. Mm -hmm. You know, everything has a function. So the terms sort of get a little different. Okay. So just as like an average Joe, though, if we want to protect ourselves, is there any kind of visualization? Oh, what I tell people to do, yeah. I just, um, in my experience, the way I was trained is just sort of a white light. Mm -hmm. Think of a white light? Yeah, just kind of like put yourself in a bubble, a positive bubble mm -hmm. type thing. You know, that's one way that you could kind of cocoon yourself from negative energy. Yeah, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. How fun. So how did you get involved in Reiki? How did you meet the woman that trained you? Um, I was introduced through a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, I was young. Mm -hmm. So um, I was introduced through a friend, and then I guess that's how I met her. I was 16. So it's kind of like... You know, it's when the students, that you the teacher appears type thing. So mm -hmm. it made a lot of sense to me at the time. Where And where did you grow up? Um, Ann Arbor, her. Michigan. It, it, was this in Ann Arbor? Mm -hmm. then? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. So. All right. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, um, so is the woman still in Ann Arbor? Do you still <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Yeah, she's still in Ann Arbor, and I still I talk to her. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's, her name is Alana Gillespie. Now, say you want to have Reiki done to yourself. Can you perform on your own, on yourself? Mm -hmm. or do part you? of being trained is learning how to hear yourself first. Okay. So part of that is, you know, the basic, we, you know, level one is more, deals with, like, healing oneself. Level two is distant healing, healing others. And mm -hmm. three is when you start getting into your mastership level and so on. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, you mentioned the functions kind of in conjunction with chakras. Uh huh. Is what, how do the functions differ? Can we get a little bit more sure, into that? Sure. Absolutely. That? Um, for example, your throat is different from your heart. I mean, mm -hmm. just obviously, and then also the function of your chakra. Your throat chakra is associated with sort of to thine own self be true, speaking one's truth. Mm -hmm. And the other is um, your heart chakra, which is your emotional relationships. We'll say. Mm -hmm. So they have different functions. And a lot of time if your heart chakra is not functioning in its most optimal form, your throat chakra, mm -hmm. because you're sort of projecting your truth about the situation. You'll so, feel it in your throat <clears throat> chakra? You'll feel it in your throat. And okay. somebody who has a closed throat chakra, mm -hmm. um, the first, you know, you start kind of backtracking. The first thing that might be assessed is mm -hmm. the fact that they aren't able to speak truthfully for whatever reasons to themselves, about mm -hmm. themselves. They cannot express themselves in their environment. It could be many different variables. So I imagine you do a lot of counseling with, with yeah. these yeah, therapies absolutely. to help mm -hmm. people get at the counseling root. Counseling and, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming Thanks. with us. It's been Thanks, wonderful Lisa. to learn all about Reiki. And you can reach Margaret at 312-664-7979 um, or um, get more information on her at www.healingquestcenter.com. Thank Thanks, you. Lisa. Okay.